Let's go. Good girl. Yeah. Good job, so determined. <laughs> My little girl, she just started walking. And she's just taken off. I mean, this is really cool for me because, you know, I, I missed the first steps of, of her walking. And, you know, that's obviously as a father, you know, you're definitely upset. But now to have her here walking around with these squeaky shoes, it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's like a built-in tracker. We're not going to lose sight of her anytime soon, that's for sure. A lady came out the other day. She was like, what is that sound? What, what am I hearing in the hallway? It's her shoes, of course, so we had to take them off. I know, I hope we're not disturbing people right now. No, we're good. I mean, how can you get mad at that? Right? How can you get mad? Here, just go this way, come on. Let's go, sweetie. Let's go. Stop number four of the Walmart FLW Tour takes us to Pickwick Lake in northwestern Alabama, which is actually one of two pit stops to the Tennessee River on the 2016 tour schedule. This part of the country has a rich background in music and features an historic recording studio in nearby Muscle Shoals, but more importantly, is home to some of the most fantastic bass fishing you'll find. So whether you're the Rolling Stones or Andy Morgan, this part of Alabama's got it going on. It's early May, and that means on Pickwick, you have some fish offshore, whether it's on ledges or some of the deeper grass. You know, and typically Pickwick is one of those events where, you know, the fish are on ledges, but like I say, it's the first week of May. It's not really there yet. There, there are a few schools, but they're few and far between. You'll also have some fish shallow, and there's even probably some shad spawning going on, which factored into the win Greg Hackney had back in 2014. So there's a lot of pieces going on in this tournament, but however you cut it, it's gonna be a fun one to watch. I am so ready to go out there and just have a tournament where you're just catching them nonstop all day. And tomorrow might be the day, but that's the way I love to fish. Just make it happen. Make it happen is the thing we gotta do this week for sure. Good luck beard growing. My wife kind of digs the five o'clock shadow, you know, with a little fuzz, so I'm just gonna keep it, man. I haven't had it this year, maybe it's good luck. If I catch them, good. I'm just telling you right now, mark this down. I'm not gonna shave it for a long time. If I don't catch them, this thing's coming off. So all in favor of keeping the beard, say aye. <laughs> I spent probably half my practice, if not more, idling ledges, just looking for those sweet spots because I know if I find that spot, I'm gonna be able to catch them. But every day I've been looking, haven't found them, I actually haven't caught a limit this whole time. So if I can catch a limit tomorrow and, and Friday, uh, I'll be, it'll be a huge accomplishment. Unfortunately, practice has been really, really tough. Uh, you know, during those tough days when I get to come home and see her, the first thing she does is when I walk in the door, she smiles. On your mark, get set, go. go. You know, that horrible practice, the bad day, you're out there, you're stressing, you're thinking, what do I gotta do? You know, it's all a race when you see her. And I got something cool this week. So I really, really wanna bring her up on the stage. So I got her the exact same jersey as me, okay? But it says her name up there. We're officially Team Meyer here this week on Pickwick Lake. Go Team Meyer! Woo woo! NorCal baby! <laughs> That was a quick night. <laughs> Brooke was awake. She got up like every hour, it seemed like. So every hour I'm like, oh, man. That was a little rough, but it was still, it didn't even matter. Just having her there, just seeing her. It's really cool. But yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they're gonna, they're gonna come to uh, blast off or not. It might be. Sleeping in today, lucky suckers. <laughs> Got ice on a cold front. <laughs> Thinking we're gonna head down the lake, we're gonna fish some deeper grass, 
swim baits, stuff like that. Look at a couple schools if they're there. See how the day's going. If we're not catching them, then we're gonna go ahead and lock up. It's a kind of a risky move, but we're just gonna see how it goes. I don't even know yet. By the time we launch, we might still go up there. I don't, I'm not sure, but we'll, uh, we'll make that decision when the time comes, for sure. Dude, another bag? These are just some Gatorades. Oh, jeez. You the bag? You should, you're well taken care of. <laughs> oh, man. You want the bag or? Mm. Who's this? Pretty girl. Good luck. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Coming into this event, Cody's 48th in the Angler of the Year points, which has him still outside the cut top 35 to make the Forest Wood Cup. And with only three tournaments left, now's the time to really kick it in gear. You know, as of now, he's definitely underwater when it comes to making the cup. Cody Meyer is known on tour as Mr. Olympia. He goes out pretty much every day, catches five fish, brings them to the scale. That's what people expect. He got that name because he holds the tour record for most consecutive limits of fish caught in competition at 50. Think about that, 50 consecutive limits and all the different weather conditions these guys fish in, all the different lakes, times of year, it's pretty mind blowing. Wilson Lake sits just upstream of Pickwick and they're separated by a dam that sports a lock to allow commercial and recreational traffic through. Wilson wasn't available for tour anglers the last time we were here in 2014 because the BFL All-American was taking place up there. However, this time, 2016, guys are allowed to fish up in Wilson Lake. So you can sacrifice some time to lock your way up to Wilson and go catch fish. Now you might ask, why would I want to leave Pickwick? Well, for a lot of guys, there's less pressure up there, and it's a little better shallow fishery. So guys that like fishing around docks, um, shallow shell beds, stuff like that, you could actually capitalize better on your strengths on Wilson than you could on Pickwick. <laughs> on day one, Pickwick's not showing Cody any love. So around mid-morning, he decides he wants to run up to Wilson and try to lock in there change things up a little bit. Well, by the time he makes it to the lock, the doors are shut, the lock master tells him, no dice, it's not happening. So Cody has to readjust his game plan, stay on Pickwick, grind it out, and uh, Mr. Limit is only able to scrounge up three fish to bring to Wayne. That's it, number three, man, it's been I'll tell you, to be honest, it's been a long time since we weighed in three at a tour event. I think it's probably going back to like 2009-ish, the Red River. That's how tough it was for me, but we learned two things, shaving the beard off, and no matter what happens, I'm stoked because my little girl's here. But the beard is coming off tonight. What'd you wind up getting? Just three little ones. 11 o'clock, I got one, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go lock up. Here he comes. So uh, here I come blowing up there. I get there, I can't find a rope. Like the rope, you know what, the, it was hidden inside the staircase. And Glenn crawled up there and pulled the cord. Finally, the guy calls me back and he says, we're not gonna even think about opening this thing till one, one o'clock at least for you to come up. So here it's 11, I'm like, oh great. So I just ran all the way up and I turned around and ran all the way back down. I had to get gas, yeah. How'd you do? <laughs> I got three tiny ones, but whatever. What, what do you do? I mean, try the best I could. I know, that's all right. Yeah. At least you survived. Yeah. <laughs> say hello, fishies. Not very big, huh? But you see them? You see them in there? What's that? Fish. Three and three. All right. Ready to go up there, sweetie? Here we go, Dial Pro, and you 
I got a little something to talk to you about. This is Squeaky Shoes. Yes, it is, man. This is little Squeaky Shoes. I guess he was up all night hearing her walk down the hallways of our hotel, squeaking around with these little we squeak shoes. <laughs> I did have to be here at like four o'clock for a boat check this morning, and there was like two constant hours of squeaky shoes going up and down the hallways. This one right here. <laughs> it might have been the big one, actually. I'm not really sure. You know what? Today was so tough on me that she's going to be such a good girl, and she's going to add about 25 pounds to my bag as soon as I put her in there. <laughs> All right? You let me do that, I'll take those shoes off. <laughs> Your jersey is awesome, by the way. I didn't catch him today. We got to have this little girl here and just makes everything all right. Got the family, man. Four pounds, 15 ounces is what you had. Good to see you guys. On our mark, get set, go. Well, unfortunately, we didn't get to use this thing today. So <laughs> hopefully tomorrow, man. It was just pretty embarrassing to have, you know, three little fish like that on Pickwick. I mean, this place is phenomenal typically but this week not so much we'll see about tomorrow hopefully the wind lies down a little bit we still might go up to wilson just try something different because uh, i haven't had don't have anything figured out don't really know what's going on what to do i mean i love coming to these places and idling around and and if you would have asked me two weeks ago if i would have been able to catch them i would have i would have bet you know i would have been able to find enough fish to catch them offshore but that's how little I know about fishing at times. It's uh, it's a humbling deal, and this is this is why they call it fishing, not catching. I mean, it's so true. Literally, it's you're trying to catch a little creature with a brain of its own, and today it didn't work out too hot. So, <laughs> hopefully tomorrow, man. That's that's all we could do. It's a new day tomorrow, and hopefully we can go get them. One of the biggest storylines from day one involved the roughly 32 pros that locked up to Wilson. Any good? About 14 pounds, but I got stuck on the other side of the locks and can't weigh them. Oh, dude. Sick. The lock master, in a lot of these events, they will set times in which these guys can lock back through. So these 32 guys that went up figured at about 1.30, they'd come back in the lock in order to get back down into Pickwick, make check-in on time. Well, mid-morning, a barge was trying to come down into Pickwick and actually came loose amidst the loading process and got stuck sideways in the lock, basically rendering the lock useless. TVA is trying to work on that situation. These guys are still fishing. Well, when they came back for that 1.30 time period, that barge was still in there. So now guys just got to sit and wait. And, and a lot of them wound up waiting two, three hours before they could even get back down to Pickwick. 32 of us got stuck over there. And in turn caused them to be penalized for being late to check in. DQ'd or All DQ'd. and lost their day's catch. Dude, three hours past the lockdown. Dude, it was tough down there. It was so rough. I caught three little fish. Brutal. I mean, brutal. I actually went up there at 10:30. They said there was a barge in the lock. You can't come through. Yeah. It, so in Cody's case, only catching three fish and not being able to make it to Wilson was actually kind of the better end of the deal. Crazy. These guys didn't make it, I don't think. Is that thing locked? Really? How many guys are up there? Wow, 32 guys. That's brutal, man. That could ruin your whole season. I mean, what I did today could ruin my whole season with a little weight, but I mean, at least I got the fish and got the check in. I mean, if he didn't check in because of a, a deal like that, it could really be bad. I think if I would've got stuck, I would've really shaved this beard off with the dull razor. <laughs> uh, go against the grain, make it hurt. I thought I was gonna try something different. You know, bass fishermen here were so superstitious, some of us, and I thought, you know what, I'll go with the beard. My wife kind of was digging it, and then yeah, I caught three fish, so the fish obviously hate the beard, and it's definitely coming off. They got gnarly. I only caught three little fish. It wasn't gnarly as getting stuck. Uh, what's that? For a cup, dude, that's it, right there. Oh, uh, well, mine's hit, right, dude, I had five pounds. See, and that's probably what I had, but see, there's still the... What'd you have? I probably had five pounds. That's it? Yeah. Oh, I thought you caught them. No, hey, no, I didn't. Dude, I was telling, 
I was saying, dude, everyone was coming in. Oh, I had like 20, no. 19, 18. There was, there, was, there was like three really good bags. I know Tracy Adams had like 18. I heard uh Rampy. Oh, what did Rampy have? He said 18. But I said, listen, dude, if I had if I had five pounds, I would have probably said, yeah, I had like 13. Right, right, right. <laughs> Wouldn't right. you? Just to make it sound. And yeah, Mark yeah. actually was like, oh, yeah, I had five yeah, pounds. Five, but look, I needed <clears> him five pounds. No, I know. Shit. So I could weigh him in and go try to catch whatever tomorrow. I know. I know. I hear you. So I don't know, dude. But yeah, some guys did catch it pretty good up there, though. Crazy. It just wasn't me. I mean, dude, down there, it was so rough, it was just, it was hard to fish. It's amazing how guys <coughs> catch them like that. I know. It is. What's the plan for tomorrow? Dude, honestly, Sweet I man. think I'm going to go back up, man, just to stay out of everybody's way, man. Because I feel like in order to catch a good bag, I'm going to have to, you know, pull up on some offshore spot that has them with somebody who's probably already fishing and they might be in the top 50 or something. I just don't want to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'll, I'll probably just go back up there, man, stay out of everybody's way and try to catch me whatever I can up catch. There. Save some points. Up yeah. There. Anyways, all right, man. Well, let's do something tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, something. I'm to do something. All right, buddy. At the end of day one, Cody's three measly fish have him sitting in 112th place. And in terms of qualifying for the Forestwood Cup, if he thought he was underwater before, well, now he's really drowning. Mid flight, man. It's a nice one for sure. That was fun. Take her. Another nice, decent fish. Woo! Number five. That will work. That feels good.
Whoa. Oh, man, it's you again. Dial up Strike King Pro Cody Meyer from Auburn, California. Hey, hey this, here we go. Yeah, Why would you make squeaky shoes? <laughs> is all I'm saying. Why would you make shoes that squeak? Oh, she's conf she's looking at you, going, "What? What, what is this? Who? I I'm gonna walk even harder tonight." <laughs> she almost grabbed that microphone. She's like, "I'm gonna do this job, Cody." What a good day, man. Yeah, it was. You know, I uh, totally switched it up today. Went up to Wilson. It wasn't hard to have a better day than yesterday. I only had five pounds, so that was brutal. But uh, went up there, just went fishing by the seat of my pants. Had fun. Caught a lot of fish and. Uh, you know, didn't get locked out. That was kind of key today. That's a bonus for sure, buddy. Here we go. 4.15 yesterday, a good bag of fish today. Cody Meyer has 19 pounds and 15 ounces, and it moves you all the way into 28th, man. Yeah, that was that was uh, definitely fortunate for that. You know, like I said, just only had four pounds yesterday on Pickwick, which is just kind of embarrassing, to be honest. So I got some redemption today. You know, I got some good points, and uh, hopefully get a check. Good luck to you, man. you, man. Here, she wants to hold that so bad, she don't even know what to do. Look at this. She's a pro. Hey, e easy. She might take your job. Oh. Hey, can we, get a, can we get a weight on her? Let's, Let's put her see. in the tub. Let's see. Let's see this. She weighs 24 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a fiver. There you go. See you, kid. Well, on day two, Cody must have put on his rally cap and ate his Wheaties because when the dust settled and the scale closed, he jumped from 112th place to 40th place, which is the largest jump in his career. Felt good. Felt good. Thanks to the fourth largest bag of the day at nearly 20 pounds. Oh, you redeemed yourself! I totally Woo! redemption. If you're asking me, I'd be pretty happy about it. On your mark, get set, go! go. Rookie pro Buddy Gross got dialed in on an offshore bite on some deep eel grass and mined out 25 pounds of bass the first day, 22 pounds the second day. Third day had another 20 pound plus bag of fish. Fourth day slipped a little bit, but you can do that when you're smashing them. And he went on to win not only his first tour event in his first season, but also the big paycheck. So congrats, buddy. Today was an awesome day, man. I mean, just doing what I did, having having the weight. That's the biggest comeback I've ever had in my professional fishing career. So, I mean, that was just, words came to describe that. I mean, yesterday, so yeah, you see the wawa. Yesterday, you know, only having four pounds, and then today catching 19, 15, it was just, made my whole week for sure. And like I said, that is the biggest comeback I've ever made in fishing. So, super stoked about that. Well, thanks to his epic comeback on day two in this event, Cody has managed to continue climbing his way up the Angler of the Year standings and now sits 40th, which is ever so close to making it inside that cut for the Forestwood Cup. And with two tournaments to go, Cody is looking pretty good, man.